In this problem, we're told when you weigh yourself on a good old terra firma, solid ground, your weight is 142 pounds. In an elevator, your apparent weight is 121 pounds. What are the direction and magnitude of the elevator's acceleration? So as always, you want to draw what's going on. And what you want to do is draw a free body diagram to represent the different forces because we're going to be dealing with weight. So one of the forces we have is the normal force. And basically what this is, is basically the scale that's going to be reading your weight. So this is basically your apparent weight. So when they say your apparent weight is 121 pounds, they're talking about the normal force. So they basically are telling us F sub N is 121 pounds, right? So we know that. And then we also have to label the weight force, right? So this is just the force due to gravity, which is just going to be equal to MG. And they tell us your weight, right? Your true weight, which is MG, is equal to 142 pounds. So we know mg is 142 pounds. So now that we have this information, what you want to do is use Newton's second law to solve the problem. So Newton, uh, Newton's second law basically tells us the net force, right? Force equals mass times acceleration, or the net force. And the way you get net force is by taking the sum of the forces, right? And setting it equal to ma. Or you don't have to set it equal to ma, you just take the sum of the forces, right? But the sum of the forces is equal to the net force, which is equal to ma. So now what we want to do is find the net force. And so when you add up the forces, you want to label them or add them up based on direction. So we're going to say MA equals, and then let's add up the forces. So 121 pounds is going upwards, so we label it positive. And then we're going to minus MG, which is 142 pounds, because it's going downwards. And so if you do this, you get MA equals the net force, which is going to be minus 21. right? So this is going to be minus 21, and it's in pounds. So we know MA is equal to minus 21, essentially. And so what we're trying to do is solve for the acceleration. So what we want to do is divide by the mass. So you'll get A equals minus 21 divided by the mass. Right, but what is the mass going to be equal to? Well, we know mg equals, or mg equals 142, right? So mg equals 142. So if we divide by m, or sorry, divide by g, right? So divide both sides by g, that'll give us the mass. So we know A is equal to minus 21, and then we know mass is equal to 142 over g, so 142 over G. And if you do this, you're going to get minus 21, right? So this is basically equal to minus 21 over 142, right, times G. So all I did was rewrite this, right, copy dot flip. And so you get A equals minus 21 divided by 1.42. And so what you should notice is this is going to be in pounds. This is going to be in pounds, and this is going to be in meters per second uh, squared, right? That's what we measure gravity in. So it's going to be the correct units because these will just cancel. So really, the acceleration is going to be minus 21 divided by 142 times g, which is uh, 9.81, uh, right? That's what g is. So you just want to plug this in. So do minus 21 divided by 142, and then times 9.81. And when you do this, you're going to get a equals minus 1.45, about this, minus 1.45, and then we measure it in meters per second squared. So minus 1.45 meters per second squared. And then what they're asking for is the magnitude and direction. So the magnitude is just the absolute value of this. So this is going to be 1.45 meters per second squared. And then the direction, since it's negative, it means downwards. So 1.45 meters per second squared, downwards. So down, words. So yeah, this is going to be the acceleration. So 1.45 meters per second squared and then it's downwards. So yeah, these are going to be your answers, and hopefully you found this useful.